Hey there, everybody. This is CP Cards and Dice, and uh, welcome to my 1983 Seaver experiment. And just to explain that, I replayed the 83 season that uh, Seaver comes back to the Mets with uh, Stratomatic and Appa, and I have the results. I found the results. And uh, I do have them on video, whether I had found the paper results or not, I had them on video. So now I'm replaying um, the same season using um, actual, of course, actual lineups and I'm playing the Seaver season um, using payoff pitch. And I wanted to uh, join the action here in the top of the ninth inning. It's a one-to-one -one game. It's the Mets at uh, Houston at the Astrodome, which is not really a home run hitting park, but Dave Kingman's. Um, got a hold of one and drove deep uh, in the fifth inning for the only Mets run. And the Houston run came in the first inning on an Omar Moreno triple. And then an, uh, an RBI ground out by Tony Scott. So um, I wanted to do a, a tutorial since it's probably going to be a short game. I'm expecting it to be a short game. Tom Seaver's out of the ball game, by the way. He pitched to 27, 28 batters, and he gave up in 6.2 innings. He gave up five hits, one run, three walks, six strikeouts. So he had a decent outing, above average outing. Um, I'm not going into his stats yet. I don't worry, worry about that much until it starts becoming time. And then we're going to compare and see how uh, payoff pitch does in comparison to the um, Stratomatic and APA which, by the way, were pretty darn good. Um, okay, so we are in the top of the ninth. It's Dave Smith. He's the reliever for the Astros. He's come in to face uh, Huey Brooks, Daryl Strawberry, and George Foster. Now, in payoff pitch, you read the results of the off-the-pitcher card first, and then it gives you a section to look in for the batter and the batters have basically four sections green a yellow a blue and i guess that's a white um and that will tell you uh, the results and if uh once it reaches the highest number in each section then you have to look into the out section it automatically becomes an out so in wheelhouse, it would be up to 51, and then anything from 52 to 99 would be an out. In the patient section, it would be up to 46, and then anything from 47 to 99 would be an out. You would look down here. Then uh, in the tough section, it would be 40. Uh, it would be 250. So anything from 50 on, 51 to 99, you would look in this out section. And then over here in play, it would be up to 43. 44 and above would be in the out section. That's it. I mean, this is a pretty simple game to follow. Um, you know, where other games have uh, multiple little quirky, you know, things that they do. This one has very few, if any, really. But it does have, you know, a few in, in things that are a little bit uh, outside of the norm, things that don't happen very much. Um, I, I don't know that it ever really uh, found a way to represent those um, you know, in a, in a real fluid and elegant way. Uh, but they happen so often, you know, um, that it doesn't really affect the game at all. It's just one of those more of the anomalies of baseball. Um, some of them are okay, some of them, but some things are, are a little bit like the wild pitch issue of having to, if you roll the 30, it's a wild pitch, and then you got to use that number because then you won't use 30s because most pitchers have a 30. So then there is a 30 on the card. So the idea is you use the, the 30 for a wild pitch, and then you use the 30 for, for the hit number, which would basically cancel out ever having a pitcher pitch two wild pitches to the same batter. So that, uh, to me, is, is a little bit, you know, of, uh, of a stickler issue, but uh, a splitting hairs issue, but... You know, I sometimes gravitate to that. So maybe that's me personally that has an issue with that. But otherwise, the, the game is, I mean, 99% easy to play. I highly recommend it to anybody. Um, it's a lot of fun. The cards are beautiful. Now, these cards are the PDFs, and 
the out section is kind of hard to read because the font is really small. I know Joe in the in the uh, company produced cards increased the size of the font. Um, by the end of the night, a lot of times I want to play, but my eyes get tired, so I really struggle to see it. So I had actually had to close my eyes last night, and now I start. I'm starting up, continue this game, and I can see it much more clearly. But the the font is pretty small on these cards, just to let you know. So whereas on the pitcher card, it's you know it's plenty large. These this section here could be made larger. I don't know why he's saving font size here because he's got plenty of space around here. And there's nothing else that he can create in there. So he's, he should uh, think about that in the future as well. So let's get started. Uh, this is going to be a short video. So I really wanted to go in depth um, into a play-by-play -play or a, rather a, a tutorial, a how-to. It's going to be Huey Brooks. So we're going to pull a card. I'm not rolling dice. Normally you roll four dice. Um, you roll two D10 and then you roll 2d6. So I'm just going to pull a card. You'll see the card getting pulled. And let me let me uh, increase the... I have a lot of shadows here. I want to do away with some of those shadows. And I think that'll help a little bit. Let me see. Let me go on this side. I still have a little bit of shadow. Okay. Um, oh, so I pulled the card. It's going to be a 9. So we're going to look over here on the pitcher's card. This is a tough. So we're going to look at a tough section. It's going to be 1 to 50. It's going to be a base hit. He's a righty. So I look on the right side. Pull a card. It's going to be an 06. And that's going to be on the tough. It's going to be a strikeout. So Dave Smith strikes out Hubie Brooks. And that is his first strikeout. He's 0 for 4. Daryl Strawberry's up now. He's 0 for 3. He's grounded out twice and flied out deep to right field. Daryl Strawberry's rookie season, 1983. We'll be facing Dave Smith, who had a 310 ERA. And here's a pitch. It's a six, and that's going to be in play. So we're going to look in, into Daryl Strawberry's in play section. So one to 42 will be a hit. I'm going to pull the card and say 15. So that's a drive in the gap. And that's quickly grabbed by the center fielder, Omar Moreno, the speedy Omar Moreno, and keeps Strawberry at first base with a single. Now, Strawberry had 19 stolen bases and only six caught stealing, so 19 out of 25. So he's going to be a 4B. A B is above average, so that is in line with his few caught stealing. So he's going to more often than not make it to second base. So if it's a 4 or less on our roll, we're going to use that for a stolen base. If not, we're going to, we're going to play through it. And it's going to be, uh, so we're going to remember that number, 4B. And it's going to be George Foster with a runner on first and one out in the top of the ninth in a one-to-one -one ball game. Dave Smith checks the sign. Alan Ashby is the catcher. Puts down his fingers, and he's set to pitch. It's a five. That's a tough, tough pitch. Let's see what Foster can do with a tough pitch. One to 52 is going to be some sort of result. It's a 61. That takes us into the out section. Ah, uh, did we get? We never got the the four that we needed. Okay, that was a five. So sixty one is going to be a fly ball to right field. Now, using my sacrifice fly or my fly advancement, strawberry on a fly, a fly to right could advance. I would check and see if it's a deep fly, and this would no, it's a short fly. So he could still advance, but he would. 90% he'd be thrown out. So it's not it's not a good number. You got to actually minus two on uh, on a bunch of things. It's I don't even want to go through it because I wouldn't do it. Um, all right, so Dave Kingman's out up with two out now. He's one for three with a home run in the fifth inning. And here's going to be the pitch. It's a six. Again, we're looking for that number to see if he steals. That's a six. That's in play. In play 21. And an in play 21 is going to be a base hit. What kind of hit is that going to be? It's going to be a line drive to center field. Runner advances to third question mark, but with two outs, Strawberry should be at least a six speed, so he would automatically advance. 
and he's a run rating of five. And it says, so I have a question mark here. It's the ball is the center field. So we're going to use the choice chart. Although I, with two outs, I don't want to get thrown out at third. So I definitely, I don't normally do it. But I will check the center fielder's arm just to see. His arm is a six. So um, it would be a one through, a two through four. He's automatically safe. Five and six, I have to roll on a choice chart. And 11 and 12. Um, 11 and 12. He's out. Normally, it's 7 to 12. He's out. But I changed that. And I made 7 to 10. It's a hold. And he changes his mind and holds. And then I uh, and then I made 11 and 12 an out because what was happening is it was too easy to get thrown out. It was like a 50-50 chance all the time. And then what, the, what did that do? I just wouldn't run. I wouldn't even think about it. I wouldn't have this conversation with you. I'll be like, oh, no, forget it. Because the there's only three, three and a half chances that he's, he's safe and the rest he's automatically out. So why even advance? And this is with two outs. So, I mean, normally you would get a, an advantage to advance with two outs. But because there's two outs... Uh, I don't want to advance him to third base. So we're going to stop at – and why Strawberry is a – I don't agree with Strawberry being a five, to be honest with you. But that is based on his run scored. You see, it's based more on his run scored minus his home runs and so on and so forth um, rather than his speed. That's not really his speed. And um, you know what? I'm going to pull the card because I already have know what the deal is. First to third, he should get a boost. But I haven't worked that into the system yet. So let's just pull the card and see what happens here. He's going to try to go with first to third. And it's uh, a seven. So a seven means he holds. Remember, seven to ten he holds. So he changes his mind. Makes a big turn and stops, goes back to second base. All right, so Kingman, and that was, of course, Strawberry at second. And Kingman's on at first. It's first and second. And here comes Ronnie Hodges. He's a left-handed hitter. He's one for three. He struck out in the second, singled in the sixth, and flied out in the eighth. And he's up again here against Dave Smith. So Dave Smith, in the two innings he's gone, he's allowed four base runners, two hits in each inning. So he's struggling a bit here. And here's the pitch to Hodges. That's a five. It's a tough, a tough 74. And that's going to take us into the out section. It's a fly ball center field. Moreno's over. That ends the inning. No runs. Two hits. Two left. And we go to the bottom of the ninth. 1-1. One, one. Jesse Orozco versus Alan Ashby. Bill Doran. And then the pitcher spot. We may see the pitcher because uh, unless, you know, unless there's a runner on second or something like that, because I like to let my uh, 1983 pitchers, uh, relief pitchers go three innings. So I don't have to use a lot of relief pitchers. But of course, if there's a runner on second base, I will bring in a pinch hitter to try to win the ball game. So Alan Ashby against Jesse Orozco, who's already gone one and one third. He can still pitch. That's an 11. That's patient. So we're going to look in the patient column. And on the lefty side, because Orozco's lefty, so it's a 77. So this goes from 1 to 43. So we're going to look at 77, and that's a fly to center. So Ashby pops one up. It's medium center field. Under it is Mookie Wilson. Squeezes it for the out. And Bill Doran. Jesse Orozco versus Bill Doran. Here's a pitch from Jesse. It's an 8. That's a tough Roscoe has a good card, a tough 70. And that is a ground of a short. Up with it is Okendo over to first in time. And um, all right, so that's going to be two outs now. And Denny, uh, not Denny Walling, it's going to be the pitcher spot. And with two outs, we're going to let the pitcher bat. Dave Smith is a one batting, so we'll pull, pull a one card. A one pitcher batting card here. Here it is. That didn't take long. And we're going to let the pitcher bat simply because 
We want him to pitch another inning, and there's two outs. Nobody on. Here's a pitch from Orozco. A three. That's, that's a ballpark. Ballpark 56. That's in play against the, uh, and the one. There's no lefty-righty split on this. So it's basically one to nine. There's a hit, and it's a nine. That's going to be a line drive base hit for the pitcher. <laughs> that's funny. A two-out single for the pitcher, Dave Smith. That's going to bring up Omar Moreno. Moreno against uh, lefties batted uh, 202. Three doubles, two triples, four walks, 100 at bats. He comes up against uh, Jesse Roscoe. Here's a pitch. That's an eight tough, tough 64. And that is going to just miss being a hit by just a few numbers. That's going to be a fly to left, and that's going to retire the side. The Astros, one hit, one left, no runs. And we go to the top of the 10th inning, tied at one. And the way I do this, I bring it to zero and I start from scratch. I want to, I want to get the little labels for the teams. So I can pop them there. It will bring this to life a little bit. This is really for me um, because sometimes the scorecard gets so built up with 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 uh, results that it's not easily read. So this is much easier for me to see. Okay, the score is one to one. So I'm, I'm um, I know RGL uses this. This comes in a toy set on eBay. You can get it on eBay. It's a baseball toy set, play set. And it comes with that. I told the guy, keep the figures, send me the, the scorecard and I, uh, scoreboard and I gave, gave him 10 bucks for it. He was selling the figures and the scoreboard for $20. And I said, just give me the scoreboard for 10. And I'll throw in $3 shipping. So $13, I was able to pick a pretty cool scoreboard up. It does the job. All right, so Dave Smith is going to face Brian Giles here in the top of the 10th inning. We're going to switch here. I want to show you how I do this. It's important that you see this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to switch from going a line to per inning to filling out all the boxes on each line. And you'll see how that works just because it's going into extra innings now. And the way I, I show extra innings is I create a little line here now. See? There you go, like that. So that's going to be inning number 10. And here's the pitch from Dave Smith to Brian Giles, Jose Okendo, and then the, the pitcher who's already gone. Well, he's gone two and a third, so I may pull Orozco depending on what's going on. All right, it's a five. That's a tough, a tough 90. And that goes from one to 55. So we look at the out section. That's a ground ball to second base. One out. Jose Okendo is up now. And Okendo is 0 for 3. He's lined down to a double play. And uh, he has um, grounded out and popped up. That's a seven in play. And a 96. So an in play 96. That's a fly to right. Two out. And the pitcher is going to bat. He actually has a single. He's one for one. He's got a 15, number 15 pitcher hitting card. I want to let him go one more inning so he'll have 3.1. Um, and here's the pitch. It's an 11. So that's going to be defense, a defense 45. Now, this could be an error or a range play. And it says error first base. So the first baseman is Ray Knight. His error rating, normally they're a three. So I can say, and it is a three. So in a three error rating, it's going to say one to 45. And I rolled a 45. So that is going to be within the error rating. So we're going to check and see. Um, how, what kind of a, is it a one or a two base error? And it's a one base error on the ground ball to first base. He bobbles it and the pitcher, Orozco beats him to the bag. So here comes the top of the order now with a runner on first and two outs. And that's a second error for the Astros today. Who was the first error against? It was against the second baseman, Bill Doran. All right, Mookie Wilson is up. Wilson is 0 for 4. Here's a pitch. 7 in play. 
So we're going to look in this little section right here against a righty, 1 to 50, and it's up 89. That's going to take us to the out section. Open ground ball to second. It's going to flip to the shortstop to end the inning. So then I'm going to go like that because the next inning is going to start there. And, uh, and that's it. So what was it? Um, it was no runs, no hits, one left, the error. And we went to the bottom of the 10th. Again, I'm doing a tutorial in a game that is in extra innings. I figured this would be a good opportunity to go really slow since I, I felt that the game would end soon. So you would really get an in-depth look at playing the game. So Ross was going to go one more inning for us against Omar Moreno. Oh, no, Moreno batted already. It's going to be Scott, Dickie Thon, and Phil Garner. Tony Scott switch hits, so he's going to be batting from the right side. So uh, I think it's time. No, not time yet. Actually, you know what? I am going to shuffle. I maybe should have shuffled on top of the 10, because that would be 7, 8, 9. Every three things you want to shuffle. So I should have shuffled before the Mets batted, but it's not the end of the world. Just want to keep a fresh set of cards. So I would love to have three, three sets. Uh, I did buy the PDF so I can print out three sets. Good morning, Donald. Uh, Ronald. Hey, Ronald Spursky. I talk to you all the time, brother, on the, on the Facebook page. Hey, help me out on that Facebook page, the uh, Universal uh, Baseball Association. I would really, if you invited some of your friends, some of your contacts, I'd really like that. I want to build that page. I feel it's, it's something really special. I really based it on everything that other pages don't allow you to do. I, I kind of wanted something that's that's a little bit different, a little bit more progressive. Not so many rules in terms of, you know, you can't do this, you can't do that. You know, I want to have new products on there. I want to have links to, to rules and modifications. And I want to, not only that, I'm picking and choosing really good. Like, instead of just basically encouraging, pushing guys to, oh, bring your content. No, I'm picking the content. And I'm going to, uh, you know, what I see that looks like, like a really good game or a new guy that comes on and he's starting to stream his stuff. I'm picking his stuff to really showcase it on the, on the site to give, you know, new people an opportunity. Um, and then, of course, not everything that we do, you know, not, for example, not everything that I do, I would want to showcase this. I would want to showcase it's an extra inning game. Plus, I'm doing a, a really uh, in-depth tutorial on payoff pitch. And just, uh, I, I also generally talk about the strategies and and, and the approaches. Hold on, hold on one second. All right, guys, okay. sorry I took that second. Um, I just needed to grab something to drink. All right, let's continue this game. It's a heck of a game. We're in the bottom of the 10th inning. The way I explained it earlier, what I do in extra innings, I move away from using one column per inning to just filling out all the boxes. And it's important that you do a straight line versus a jagged line, because a jagged line means the pitcher came in. A straight line, that means that it was the end of an inning. So I want to make sure it's not doesn't look jaggedy. All right. So it's going to be Orozco versus Scott. This is the last thing Orozco is going to go. I may actually remove him after 
two batters. So he's going to face Tony Scott. We're going to pull a card. It's an 11. So we look here in the patient. It's an 11 as a patient. So we're going to take it takes us to on the lefty side. It's going to be a uh, one to 57. It's going to be a base hit or, or some sort of uh, opportunity to be on base. So let's pull a card. See what we get. We got a 54, and that's going to fall into the 39 to 57 range. It's going to be a base hit, single, little ground ball, and through into left field for base hit. So Scott, who has not so good speed, he only stole five stolen bases. He was caught four times, so he's going to be a D. That means he's going to get caught a lot. I guess D is almost 50% caught. That's what that means. And... Um, so we are not going to be running here. Um, I'm not going to do that. Scott is a good run rating. You see, he scored a lot of runs. He just didn't steal a lot of bases. So he's an eight run rating. So here's Dickie Fon. And what I like to do, if Dickie Fon didn't strike out a lot, he struck out uh, 75 times in, in about 600 bats. So that's a – he doesn't have a lot of strikeouts. So what I want to do here is a hit and run. I'll show you how to do that. Now, there's a section for hit and run. Let me show you that on the chart. It's right there. Certain things change. I made little mods. I do my little mods, but not nothing major. My mods are very, very, you know, uh, um, very, very uh, uh, obscure almost. Um, all right, so here's a pitch, Shirasco to Dickie Thon. It's going to be, uh, and there goes Scott. That's a nine. It's a tough, a tough result. This is not good. Uh, okay, a tough 83. A tough 83 is going to take us to the out section. It's going to be a fly to center. So back goes Tony Scott. She just wanted to stay out of the double play. Phil Garner. Here's a pitch. It's an 11 again. That's a patient. A patient 61, and that is going to take us to a ground ball to third. This may be a double play. We're going to use that 11, and it's not going to be – be one play, and that's the first. This is going to move Scott to second base. So there was only one play for the third baseman. It was in the hole. He got to it. And only one place for him to throw. That was first. So Scott moves up to second with two outs. So the winning run is at second base here. Will Jose Cruz come through? Lefty on lefty. Um, you know what? And what we're going to do is we're going to bring in Jose Diaz. I'm sorry, Carlos Diaz to face. And Orozco had a, has a tremendous card, man. A 147 ERA, 13 and 7. He had a lot of a lot of decisions, almost 20 decisions for a relief pitcher. I think he led the, the team in in victories at 13 and 7. That's pretty that's pretty interesting. I gotta look that up. All right, so we're gonna bring in another pitcher because uh Orozco. I, I, in the early 1980s, it was, you know, you, it was not unusual to see a relief pitcher going three innings. So I kind of, uh, I'm a guy who just wants to play the game. I, I don't want to make, I will make pitch and changes when I have to, but I don't want to, you know. So I let him go three innings. Now I'm going to pull him for another really top relief pitcher for the Mets who had a, a 205 ERA. So Mets have some really top quality relief pitchers in 1983. And you see, that's the jagged line. That tells you a new pitcher came in. And I'm already right that um, uh, um, Orozco went three innings. So I'm going to put Orozco up here with three innings. And then I'm going to put in Diaz coming in. And Diaz is going to go three innings as well, hopefully. Um, I may just let him go too. We'll, we'll see how I feel if. Um, and it's going to be Jose, Jose Cruz, lefty versus lefty. And the winning run is at second base. He's got good base running ability. Not so much the speed for the stolen base, but the base running ability. Joe separates those two things. Hey there, Wesley King. How are you, brother? I got the game two years ago. I have only played a handful of games so far. Welcome to the club. But remember, I'm doing this. This uh, I'm comparing and contrasting the three different systems. Um, 
Appa, Stratomatic, and Payoff Pitch in terms of what the stats look like for the Seaver replay season of 83. So that's something that has me pumped up. I want to look at those results, and I know a lot of guys are going to be interested in seeing those results. All right, so uh, I built it up enough here. I went on to a commercial break. It's Carlos Diaz facing Jose Cruz, the wing runners at second base. We uh, Jose Cruz versus lefties bad 313 versus righties 320. So he had a heck of a season. He had 600 bats. That's in a full season. So, you know, we wouldn't even consider walking Cruz here to face Ray Knight. Ray Knight versus lefties bad 293. So even Ray Knight had a good season. So whether we go to Cruz or Knight, we're stuck. So here's a pitch from Diaz. This could be the ball game. That's a 10. That's going to be a tough result. A tough 64 on the left side is going to be an out. The Mets get out of the inning with a ground ball. Third base. Hubie Brooks is up with it. Fires the first in time to retire the side. All right. So we go to the top of the 11th inning. Again, I, I do these bars, if you will. These bars are going to denote an end of an inning. So that was, I could even write here, the end of the 10th inning. And then here you'll have the 11th inning starting. All right. So we're going to have uh, Hubie Brooks starting it up. Push this aside a little bit, make a little extra space against uh, okay, it's gonna be Huey Brooks, Daryl Strawberry, and George Foster, two guys that have good power. And Dave Smith is in his last inning, I believe. Dave Smith went one there, then he went two. Nope, Dave Smith is done. I let him bat there, but he is done. So this was the end of the inning, and then now there's going to get a new pitcher. And who are we going to get? The way I do this is I go back into the um, box scores, and I kind of look at who was – Dave Smith pitched in this game. It was a close – let me see. It was a pretty close game. Let me take a look. This game, the score was 3 to nothing. Mets won it. Dave Smith came out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fast-forward it to the – or advance it to the next game, the next Astros game, and see – who are the relief pitchers that come out in that game? That way I get a flavor, a nice t historical taste for who was pitching for them at this time in the season. I like to do that. Uh, you know, I don't use.